I'm so excited yeah. to have Taylor here, one of our Immune Resilience alumni. So welcome, Taylor, and thanks for agreeing to share your story. Of course, I'm excited to talk about it. So let's just let the audience get to know you a little bit. Uh, if you want to share a bit about your health history, uh, anything about how your health issues started developing and what was kind of that final triggering event that got you to your your rock bottom in your health? Um, okay, so my first, well, the first symptoms that kind of started being debilitating for me um, were when I was pregnant um, with my second child. So um, I was, let's see, if I got pregnant in August, September, October, and November. Um, about, let's say seven months pregnant. Um, and before that, my pregnancy was going well. I had no complications, blood pressure's fine, no gestational diabetes, nothing like that. Um, I just started getting nauseous, like really nauseous, like every three hours, it was almost like clockwork. Um, and you know, I kept going to the doctor and the doctor would say, oh, you need to eat more. You need to drink more water. Um, but I also was drinking excessive amounts of water. I could not quench my thirst um, to the point that I was drinking upwards to almost two gallons of water a day. I mean, it was really bad. Um, and I was at this point eating at least every three hours um, because I found that food was sometimes the only thing that would help. Um, and so I just kept going back to the doctor, they would do blood work. Um, and then, um, you know, everything would be fine. And they just kept telling me to do those things. Um, and then one day I was getting ready to go to the doctor. Um, and I started getting really, really dizzy, really, really hot and nauseous. And I, I felt like I was going to pass out. Um, I was shaking. It was really bad. Um, and at that point, um, I just had my husband call the ambulance because I was like, something's not right. Like I can't even move. I don't even think I could get to the car right now. Like it was bad. Um, ambulance comes, I go to the hospital. Um, everything, they say, everything's normal. Everything's fine. Maybe the baby was sitting on your, your, a nerve or something and causing you to feel that way. Um, and so at that point, things really just seemed to take like a downward spiral. Um, the nausea was getting more frequent. Um, the food wasn't helping as much anymore. I was getting more thirsty, like, and, um, looking back now, I know my nervous system was just like, so dysregulated at that point. I mean, I was so anxious. I was shaking all the time. Um, I always felt like I was going to pass out. I didn't want to be alone. Um, my husband ended up having to take leave from work. He's in the military because I could not be alone with our son. Like I just did not feel comfortable to be alone. Um, so, you know, a few months go by of this, all of these symptoms and the doctor still, my OBGYN, he just like, I don't know what to tell you. You just need to take more breaks. You need to sit down more. You know, I'm like, I can't even make food for my son. I can't do it. Like, I literally can't do things. And I remember him asking me, well, well, what things do you want to do? And I'm like, Every, like normal people things, you know? Function, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I just felt like no one was taking me seriously. And I felt like being pregnant was probably one of the reasons just, you know, women go through stuff when they're pregnant. So my big hope was I'd give birth and everything would go back to normal and I'd be fine. So I give birth and, um, everything did not go back to normal. Actually, everything got even more worse from there. Um, and I, the week after I gave birth, I went back to my doctor because now I was dizzy all the time. Um, and the dizziness just kept getting worse. I'd stand up and I just felt like the room was like, you know, I was like going like this and, um, it was just so, so bad. And my anxiety was just through the roof. Um, and I, as the months were going by, um, I ended up 
making an appointment with my, um, my normal doctor, my general doctor, because I was no longer the OBGYN couldn't help me anymore. Um, and, um, so that doctor started putting in referrals for things for me, like physical therapy and, um, new symptoms would pop up. I mean, then I started having like a high heart rate in the morning. Um, and not, not to the point of like a POTS type of heart rate, but it was high, you know, I'd stand up and my heart rate's like 110, 115. Um, and, um, you know, then I started noticing things like, um, my feet and my hands were turning blue. Um, and all the while, every other symptom I had just kept getting worse. Um, and mm -hmm. so I kept going to see doctors. I saw a cardiologist, I saw a neurologist, I had MRIs, I had, um, I had real, then I started having really bad reflux. Um, and I was just like regurgitating my food all the time. Um, and then I was noticing like certain foods I couldn't eat anymore. Um, cause they would make me feel way worse. Um, to the point that I was basically just eating chicken breast, broccoli and rice every single day. Mm -hmm. Um, and so fast forward, I mean, this, this went on for six, seven months, um, of my symptoms mm -hmm. just getting worse and me just waiting to see the next doctor. I mean, it was just a lot of like, okay, the next doctor will be the one that's going to find something like somebody's going to yeah. help me. Um, while I'm trying to take care of a newborn, trying to take care of my four-year-old the best I could and thank God for my husband, because he just, you know, was doing everything in the house. Like, Oh, it makes me want to cry because it was just, it was such like, um, a hopeless time. And I just felt like no one was going to help me. Um, and I remember like towards the end, right before I found you, um, I was just like in the shower and I was crying and I was just like literally yelling out to God, like, if this is the life I have to live, like, please just take me because I just can't, like, I can't do this. Um, and so we went to go to my parents' house, um, and they live in Northern California, um, and just because, you know, we needed, we, I needed more help. So we, we went there. Um, and while I was there, I started getting, um, like a swollen tongue. And every time I would eat, my symptoms would spike. Like instead of the food helping now things were, it was making it worse. Um, and mm -hmm. a lot of the doctors before had mentioned, oh, well, have you heard of POTS? You know, do you think you have POTS? And of course, you know, every single day of those seven months, I was Googling every single symptom I had trying to figure this out for myself. Um, and so through that, I had looked at POTS videos, looked at, you know, maybe it is POTS. Okay. So how do I treat myself for POTS? Um, which by the way, treating myself for POTS with like, uh, electrolyte drinks, you know, the over the counter stuff like that did absolutely nothing. Like it did not touch anything. <laughs> um, but, um, I remember in those videos I had seen, um, MCAS and I was like, mm. oh, well this isn't me cause I'm not having allergic reactions. So this definitely isn't what I have. Um, well, when my tongue started swelling and food started making me react. Um, I, I thought of that and I was like, okay, maybe, maybe this is what it could be. Um, and so I just randomly went on TikTok and found videos about MCAS and you were one of the first videos I watched. And I was like, wow, this, this kind of makes a lot of sense. Like these, all my symptoms kind of match this. Um, yeah. So we were there for about a week at my parents' house and I went to your website and clicked on your re your rebuild your immune response mini course. Um, and I was like, it's worth a shot at this point. Like it's worth a shot. So I did it. Um, I started the diet like immediately. Um, and mm -hmm. I, like within two weeks, I mean, before the two weeks, but within those two weeks, I just saw 
like a huge improvement in my symptoms just alone from doing the diet. And I was just like, okay, there's something to this, like something is working. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of how I found you and kind of got on this path. Um, and yeah, then I did the intake and we talked, you know, the immune resilience would be a good fit for me. Um, and at that point when I did that, I was probably about a month and a half in, um, Mm -hmm. and I had taken my kids to the grocery store for the first time since I had been sick. Um, and I just remember like, I was just so ecstatic to be able to walk into a store by myself with my kids. Um, I just couldn't believe how, how much it was working. So yeah. And now I'm (laughs) deep into it. Oh, that's so incredible, Taylor. Thanks for sharing that. And it's amazing. Sometimes we might see little things building up, but then it's like it just snowballs into this huge crash. So, I mean, when you described how things were at your worst, I mean, oh my gosh, I just have so much compassion for that and having two little kids at the same time, like how horrible that must have been. But yeah, sometimes these conditions, they really just do come together and they kind of layer on top of each other. So the POTS MCAS connection is huge. And so many people have that until they realize that like, oh, wait, I can address all of these things at once. They're actually into you're related with like the same root causes like you're just not getting anywhere so you saw some pretty quick improvement just doing the nutritional interventions um were there other things in the program that you felt like were also really helpful in your recovery oh yeah absolutely um I know learning now like how congested my liver is and Mm. was (laughs) um and so I think all everything, the supplementation. Um, I think like, you know, I breastfed my first son for, um, three and a half years. Um, and I think that I was probably really deficient in a lot of things that I didn't realize I was deficient in. Um, I think, you know, like learning about, you know, the leaky gut and like how I wasn't probably even absorbing a lot of the stuff that I was taking in. Um, and just all of the nervous system regulation stuff has been like insanely helpful for me. I think I have lived in a state of fight or flight probably since I was a child. Um, I think I had like a really dysregulated childhood. Um, I had those, you know, um, the attachment styles were not good. Um, and I just, I lived in like a constant state of, of the unknown, I would say more than anything, there was not a lot of like things that I could trust, um, in my childhood. And so I think it stemmed as far back as that, just this like constant cycle that I was in um of fight or flight and so just learning that about myself and learning how to recognize um those things now and how to help myself through that and how to heal that part of me um has all all of it has just been really life-changing yeah yeah, absolutely. And and like you said, I mean, you probably were so nutrient depleted. I mean, so much of us, so many of us are nutrient depleted anyway. And then pregnancy and breastfeeding just adds so much to that, especially everything starting after your second pre- pregnancy, it really adds up. But at the same time, sometimes people will do everything perfect with the diet and they'll see some improvements, but then they'll kind of hit a bit of a wall with it. And it's because they haven't really addressed the nervous system piece. And like you're sharing, sometimes those patterns that keep us in this chronic stress response go back decades, (laughs) you know, so we really have to do a lot to intentionally retrain that. Are there certain tools that you feel like were the most helpful with that that you learned? Or what has that been like for you? Um, I think just like slowing down has been a huge mm-hmm. one. Um, yeah. I've always been like, like really task oriented and like 
I need to get this done. I need to get this done. This constant running list in my head. Um, And just learning how to like slow down and recognize what my body is actually doing when I'm behaving that way. Um, My breathing is rapid, you know, like I can feel my body shaking. um, And also just my, my own reaction to what my body is doing. So like, If I do get shaky or I do feel rapid breathing or I do start to feel a little nauseous or whatever symptom I'm having, um, learning how to say, okay, body's telling me something and not like Mm. my body wants to kill me. I think like we, we talked about this a lot in group, but it's like, your body is not trying to kill you. Your body is trying to keep you alive. And so, um, you know, just like recognizing those things about myself and being able to say, okay, what, what is my body trying to tell me? What do I need to do to help my body feel safe? Um, questions like that. And just learning how to ask that stuff because before it was just like, you know, oh my gosh, I feel, I don't feel good. Like, why do I feel this way? And spiraling out of control over a symptom. Whereas now I'm like, I see you okay, I understand. Let's go do this thing to help you feel better. Mm, Yeah. Just the way you interact with your body has changed so much like that in itself is a nervous system regulation practice. It's so beautiful. Yeah, Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, so you saw some really great improvements in actually a pretty short period of time. It's really quite remarkable, actually. But of course, there are always ups and downs in the journey. Were there periods that were difficult, like with the die-off or detox reactions that you want to share and just kind of how you're able to understand those and get through them? Yeah, um, I will say that there was like some troubleshooting, like at certain a certain point, I went to just the carnivore. Um, then I came back, and I think maybe I didn't realize that I was struggling with um, salicylates a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think like even now, um, I recognize like right now I'm getting off of Allegra, so I was able to wean off of an antidepressant. I was able to wean off of Pepsid, um, and now wow. like. So every, every one of those weaning processes, you know, my symptoms would uptick, my anxiety would go up, like I'd react a little more. Um, And so, um, yeah, I just think that like understanding that there's going to be the highs and lows, like you're going to struggle with something with things more times than others. And, um, but yeah, I think that's just it. Like my histamine levels going up sometimes is still kind of a struggle. Um, and so I just, you know, I know, I know why, I guess. And that mm-hmm. just easier because I'm like, okay, yeah. it's uncomfortable, but it's manageable. Like I'm going to be okay. And I know why this is happening. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, I guess, just recognizing like, you're going to have your ebbs and flows with healing. It's not just going to be, you know, a one and done thing. Um, And I think before too, like I struggled a lot with like comparing to other people's journeys. Like Mm -hmm. why are they getting better so much faster? Like why can they do ferments and I can't, you know, things like that. Yeah. And I think I've just really truly accepted my journey now and now I don't care how long I have to, you know, eat pureed food for as long as I feel good, you know, and that's the biggest thing is like, I just know my journey is going to look different than everyone else's and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, It's how we approach the ups and downs, like the understanding we have that makes such a difference because yeah, we're life just isn't like this, just steady escalator up, unfortunately, right? There's always going to be those bumps in the road, but if you know, it's okay. And you know why it's happening and that your body's doing something important. seems like we usually feel even better after we hit those bumps. Yeah. Um, 
I'm also wondering if you can share a bit just about where you are now. So you started the diet in August, you joined the Immune Resilience Program in October. Um, so gosh, I guess it's been, what, almost like nine or 10 months that you've yeah. been doing the diet, and like seven months that you've been, you know, you graduated from the six month program, but you know, been doing the protocols for like seven months now. Can you just share a little bit about where you are in your recovery, like things you're able to do now or things you've been able to yeah. add back in? Um, obviously, we want to be careful of those comparisons, right? Like everyone's journey and timeline is going to be different. Some people's are going to be shorter, some people are going to be longer. But I think some people do like to hear just examples of what progress might look like. Yeah. Um, well, I'd say like overall in general, I just feel so much better. Um, yeah. My anxiety, you know, like I said, I was able to wean off anxiety medication or antidepressant. Um, so that was huge. Um, and as far as like just daily life, I mean, it's, it's normal. You know what I mean? Like to go from, I couldn't even stand up to put laundry away to I'm standing up all day, you know, like walking around in my house, going to the grocery store, going shopping. Um, this is a huge one. I just flew across the country with my kids to Maine for two and a half weeks, um, navigated traveling with kids, going to the airport. Like, I mean, things that... I wasn't sure I was ever going to be able to do again that are just like part of my normal daily life again. Um, I've been able to be outside. My body can tolerate sun again. Um, not fully. That's one symptom I still struggle with. I do like have not a huge tolerance for heat and sun, um, but I can and I can be out at the park every day with my kids um, for reasonable amounts of time. So that's been wonderful. Um, and one thing in particular, I remember asking you in the very beginning about, um, you know, like my circulation issues because my hands and my feet were turning blue. Um, and at that point I was wearing compression socks every single day, all day long. Um, and I am happy to say that I am not wearing compression socks anymore. Yeah. And so, um, I know when you said, well, sometimes that can take, you know, a couple years and I'm like, just so excited because I, you know, there are days where I feel like my circulation isn't as great as it could be. Um, but I don't feel like I need to be having compression on all the time. So that is like so huge. Um, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, and as far as food goes, you know, like, um, I'm still doing the meat stock. I do six cups of meat stock a day. Um, and so, and you, it took you a while, sorry to interrupt, but I just want to emphasize that you did not start out doing that amount of meat stock. Like that no. was a journey. You were doing like teaspoons of it at first yes. and now look I, at you. <laughs> I started, I think I started with a quarter teaspoon, like something really okay, small. Yeah. I stayed really low for a really long time just to mm -hmm. like be able to get through it because it was, it was rough at first. Um, and here I am yeah. doing six cups of meat stock a day now. So, um, just being able to include something high histamine like that was, you know, really big. Um, you know, my meat when I was flying, um, unthawed. And so, um, I was like, I'm going to try it and just kind of see what happens. Um, and I was able to tolerate that. So that was nice that it didn't have to be completely frozen. And because um, I was kind of nervous about that. <laughs> um, yeah. And so I just, I think my body is like starting to tolerate some higher histamine things now. Um, and yeah, so I, that's, it's just been great improvement all around. Um, there's, you know, definitely things I still am struggling with and still need to heal. Um, but you know, we're, we're on the, on the uptick, even though it's like this, it's like steadily moving up. And so, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. 
Oh, well, what a beautiful and inspiring story. I guess I want to uh, give you a chance to wrap it up with anything you feel like you want people to know mm -hmm. who maybe are just starting or considering getting started in this journey. Um, do you have any like words of wisdom or things that you uh, want to share? I, I guess I just want to say like, I, so when I was going to school, I went to school for, um, for the medical field. I mean, I have CNA certification, EMT certification. I've done all the biologies and chemistries. Um, I was a personal trainer. I worked in the fitness industry, um, forever. And I just feel like there's so much information that we take as Bible, you know, and, um, I just feel like no matter what you've been told or what, you know, you've learned from a textbook or whatever the case, like there's always another way. And I just think like I had put so much hope into modern medicine and, um, you know, it failed me so hard. And I just felt like, well, if, these things don't work, then what's going to work? Um, and so I just think like someone that is struggling right now and wanting to find an answer, you know, there is another way. And, you know, me and a bunch of other, you know, a ton of other people are proof of that, that, you know, you don't have to have a diagnosis, even you can just start and, you know, I think that's like a big thing too. It's like, I was so stuck on what is wrong with me. Like, I just want to know what is wrong. Doctors throw 500,000 prescriptions at you and they just want to mask the symptoms. And, you know, there's a reason your body is screaming at you. Um, something is not right. And there is a way to help that. So I think that would just be my biggest peace to someone else is you don't have to know what's wrong. Um, you don't need someone to tell you what's wrong. You just need to start healing your body as a whole, I guess. Oh my gosh, how much time it would be saved and how much suffering would be prevented if we all listen to those words of wisdom. That's incredible. Thank you so much, Taylor. I appreciate your time today. Thank you.